Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a cutting edge technique used in modern neuroscience for measuring neural activity. This technique is called fiber photometry and has begun to provide insights into the functions of specific brain circuits. Early neuroscientists wanted to record activity of neurons in the brain of awake moving animals so that they can discover clues as to what specific brain areas and circuits do. The first method used to detect neural activity used electrophysiology. This technique involved implanting simple electrodes in a rodent brain. These electrodes allowed for recording electrical activity produced by action potentials of neurons in the region where they are implanted. This technique helped a lot in understanding the function of different brain areas, but as our understanding of neuroscience grew, it became apparent that broad electrical activity isn't enough to understand the complex circuits within a brain area. For example, in this hypothetical circuit, activation of cell A would cause behavioral output A, and activation of cell B would cause behavioral output B. Since both cells are in proximity to each other, the electrode cannot distinguish between when cell A is active, when cell B is active, or when both cells are active. To overcome this problem, neuroscience developed the fire photometry technique, which allows you to measure from specific cell populations in the specific brain areas of interest. Before I describe how this works, I'll give a bit of background starting with the mechanism by which neurons release neurotransmitters. When neurons are not active, they are negatively charged on the inside. When an excitatory neurotransmitter activates receptors on these neurons, positively charged ions flow into the cell and depolarize it. If the depolarization reaches a certain threshold, it triggers an action potential, which is basically a positive charge that moves across the membrane and towards the axon terminal. This charge is what is measured in electrophysiology. The action potential then reaches the axon terminal, where neurotransmitters reside in vesicles. The membrane at the axon terminal also contains voltage-gated calcium channels. These channels open in response to changes in voltage. The open channel allows calcium ions, which are far more abundant outside the cell, to flow into the terminal. These calcium ions induce a cascade of events that results in the neurotransmitter vesicles fusing to the terminal membrane and ultimately releasing the neurotransmitters that can influence postsynaptic neurons. Given that calcium influx is required for neurotransmitter release, fire photometry measures calcium influx as a proxy for neural activity. Several advances allowed for the engineering of proteins that can fluoresce a specific color in the presence of calcium. The most commonly used calcium indicator is GCAMP, and it's basically a fusion of two proteins. One protein is of the green fluorescent protein, which was first discovered in the jellyfish Aquaria victoria. This protein contains a fluorophore in the center and can absorb blue light and emit green light. The second protein is calmodulin, which is a protein found in all cells and plays an important role in detecting calcium and triggering signaling cascades. By combining these two proteins, scientists now have a tool that, if bound to calcium, will emit green light in the presence of blue light. The gene that encodes these two proteins can then be expressed in whatever cell you are interested in using various modification techniques. What makes this system better than electrophysiology is the ability to record from specific cells. This is achieved using a genetic approach. Cells of different types express different genes and therefore contain different proteins. The cell determines which genes to express based on promoter sequences that precede the gene. Scientists take advantage of this promoter-dependent expression and genetically modify mice so that they express a protein called Cre under the control of a cell-specific promoter. As a result, all cells will have the Cre gene, but only cells that transcribe genes that contain that promoter will have the Cre protein. The Cre gene was originally discovered in bacteria, and the function of the Cre protein is to cut parts of the DNA that contain LOXP sites. LOXP sites are not present in animal DNA, so Cre expression alone doesn't do anything. Once the mouse reaches an appropriate age, they are injected with a virus that contains the GCAMP gene, but it is preceded by a stop codon that has LOXP sites on both sides of it. The virus then inserts its sequence into the genome of all cells at that injection site. In the cells that do not express Cre, the stop codon prevents expression of GCAMP. However, in the cells that do express Cre, the LOXP sites are targeted and the stop codon is cut from the genome. Now, Cre expressing cells will also express GCAMP. This process allows for cell specific expression. Using this method, only cells that express the gene of interest will also express the GCAMP protein. 
To record the activity, scientists use fiber optics which can transmit and receive light signals. First, a fiber optic is implanted in the area of interest in a mouse's brain. On the experiment day, the fiber is attached to a laser and a detector. When the laser is activated, blue photons are reflected off a dichroic mirror and transmitted into the fiber where it travels to the mouse's brain. In the brain, if the cell is not active, there will be no calcium to bind to G-camp and the photons will be absorbed by the tissue. However, if the cell is active, calcium will activate G-camp. Active G-camp will absorb blue photons and emit a green photon that goes back up to the fiber. These green photons travel back up through the fiber and pass through the dichroic mirror and continue to a detector that converts the photons into an electrical signal that is recorded on the computer. This allows for live tracking of the neural activity over time. Here's an example of a study that uses fire photometry. The authors of this study were interested in neurons within the lateral hypothalamus that contain the neuropeptide orexin. It has long been known that activating orexin neurons can drive feeding behavior, but how the cells respond when an animal begins to eat was not known. The authors injected G-camp into the lateral hypothalamus of orexin cree mice and implanted fiber optics in the lateral hypothalamus. You can see in this video, whenever a hungry mouse drinks from sugar water from the sipper on the right, you can see a drop in the measured calcium signal displayed on the left. This response is apparent in this figure, where responses of several mice were averaged together. This result suggests that orexin neurons are active when the mouse is seeking food, but the activity begins to decrease after the animal has found food. As another example, this study also targeted the lateral hypothalamus, but were instead interested in the role of neurons that contain the neurotransmitter GABA in predatory behavior. The authors injected G-camp into the lateral hypothalamus of V-GAT Cree mice. In this video, the mouse explores a chamber along with the cricket. When the mouse recognizes the cricket, it swiftly chases and consumes the cricket. You can see the calcium activity on the right sharply increase when the mouse begins the chase. This response is apparent in the average traces from several mice. This suggests that GABA neurons in the lateral hypothalamus are involved with predation. In summary, neurons require calcium to release neurotransmitters. G-CAMP is an engineered protein that can fluoresce in the presence of calcium. Genetic techniques allow for the cell-specific expression of G-CAMP. Fiber optics are implanted and fluorescence activity can be measured over time. Thank you for watching. Sources for all the information in this video can be found in the description below.